Hey there, I'm Sandra Cohn. I'm a Seattle-based newborn and family photographer, and today I am sharing five tips for photographing newborns with strobes and flash. Tip number one, take your light off your camera. Now, a lot of photographers who are new to flash photography will just grab their speed light, pop it on the top of their camera, fire it directly at their subject and just start shooting away. And the problem with this approach is that it just creates light that's, light that's not very interesting. You're gonna get really flat light and your light's going to look kind of harsh and like flashy, you know, things that people don't necessarily want out of a professional photograph, all right? But when you take your light off your camera, put it on a stand, first of all, you have a lot more control. You can create, you know, where your highlights fall, you can create some beautiful shadows. You're just gonna get a lot more direction and dimension to your images, and they're just gonna look prettier. All right, you guys, tip number two is use a large modifier. Now, once your light is off camera, it's on a stand, put it in a large modifier relative to your subject. And the reason for that is, of course, the larger your light source, the softer your light. And soft light is just beautiful light to use when working with newborns. It just works really well for that genre, all right? Now, the other thing I love about using a large modifier when working with newborns is it makes it really easy for me to add in other family members. So once I've photographed the baby, I can bring in siblings, I can bring in parents, I can do the entire family without having to change anything about my setup. So I can just leave my light where it is, I can leave my modifier where it is, I know it's big enough that everybody's going to be lit evenly and beautifully, and it just works really well. Now, my favorite go-to light is the Westcott seven foot umbrella, and I actually use the shoot through umbrella not as a shoot through. And if you wanna know why, just send me a DM on Instagram and I'll tell you all about it. Tip number three, bring your light in nice and close. Now listen, I love soft light. When I'm working with strobes and flash in my studio, my goal is to make my light look like window light. And one of the ways I do that, of course, is by taking my light off my camera and putting it in a really big modifier. And another way that I do that is then I bring that light in nice and close to my subject. And that is because the closer your light is to your subject, the softer your light is. And again, my goal is to create beautiful, soft light that looks like a north facing window. So when you're photographing newborns and families, don't be afraid to bring that light in nice and close. When I'm working with my babies, my light's usually about two to three feet away from the top of their head. All right, friends, that brings us to tip number four, which is make sure your light is placed at the top of the baby's head not at their feet. Most portrait photographers know that uplighting their subject just isn't very flattering, right? If you are taking a portrait of an adult or you're doing headshots for somebody, you're not gonna light them from the chin up. That creates what's called ghoul light, which is that kind of, you know, scary horror film light, and it's just not very flattering. Well, this is a mistake I see in newborn photography all the time. People take all this time and effort to get the, the babies they're working with asleep and positioned, um, and then they light them in a way that accidentally uplights them, and it's just not very flattering. So to guard against that, just make sure that your light is always pointing towards the top of the baby's head. So if your baby is asleep on a bed, make sure your light is positioned at the top of their head, not down by their feet. Um, if they're in, a, in their parents' arms, let's say they're sleeping and mom and dad are holding them, just make sure that again, their head is pointing towards your light source and not their feet, okay? Um, that way, if their head is facing towards the light source, you're gonna, you're gonna get that light that falls down the face instead of up the face. So when, you, when light falls down the face, of course, you're creating that beautiful butterfly light. You can look for a little shadow under their nose and chin to know that you're doing it right. Just really make sure you're not getting up lighting um, because it's not pretty and nobody wants to see their baby photograph like that. Tip number five, use a handheld light meter. All right, I'm such a believer in metering when working with newborns or babies or small kids, honestly, anybody in your studio, and here's why. 
Now, first of all, I'm a film photographer, so the cameras that I use don't have LCD screens, right? Like I can't check the back of my screen to make sure my light is right. My meter is literally my eyeballs when I'm in the studio. But even if you're a digital photographer and you can look at the back of your screen, you are gonna waste so much time if you are taking a picture, looking at your screen, adjusting your lights and doing all of that kind of stuff at a session. And when you're working with babies and little kids, you just don't have that kind of time Time. they are impatient they cry you know when you're working with newborns you have to be efficient you have to get in there and get your shots um, while the baby is happy and sleeping now another thing that newborns do especially in their sleep is all sorts of really cute things they yawn and they sleep smile and they stretch and if you're fussing with the back of your camera and then fussing with your lights you're gonna miss those moments and so it just makes sense to use a meter. When you use a meter, you can come in, meter right away, set your lights, set your camera to where they need to be, and then you're done, and you don't have to worry about it again for the rest of the shoot. And that means that your attention can be where it should be, which is on your teeny tiny little client, not on the back of your camera, all right? I hope that was helpful. If you would like to learn more about how to create beautiful, soft, natural looking night with strobes and flash, check out my website, sandraconeducation.com. Or if you want to see some of my work or maybe send me a DM to say hello, you can follow me on Instagram at sandracone. All right, thanks, bye.